Dr. Saar, France has pledged to return African artefacts by mm -hmm. the year 2022. Are you satisfied with the progress? Uh, from a political point of view, and what has been done is very few. France has promised to restitute artifacts from the Benin Republic. Just after the, when we gave the report to the French president, we discussed with him one hour and a half. And in, he, in, in this discussion, he, he decided to start the process of restitution by restituting the, the, these artifacts. But until now, I don't know that they have made a little progress because they have decided to, 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 to do it. The, the Benin Republic has said that they are not ready yet right. to, 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 to host their artifacts because they need to build infrastructure, etc. On that point, yeah. a lot of people who are opposed to the mm -hmm. restitution make the it's point the argument, yes. that Africans won't be able to look after mm. the artifacts. What do you make of that? It's, it's a very bad argument. What, the first thing we have done is that we have made a kind of, uh, a kind of statistics of African museums under the Sahara. We found 500 museums in Sub-Saharan Africa. We were the first uh, surprised by the, the, the number of museums. You have some countries like South Africa, Nigeria, Kenya, that ha they have between 30 and, and 50 mm. museums. And if you look at the number of objects that the African director of museum wants in the short terms, you have more than infrastructure to host them. Right. And the question is not a true question because the question is not the question of the museum. These objects were not taken in museum. They were taken in house, mm. in spiritual spaces, in, in a lot of places, in yards, in kingdoms, etc., etc. And we have oh. traveled across Africa with we Benedict to Savoy in five countries to mm. see what were the local infrastructure in Benin, right. in Cameroon, in Mali. And some objects, they can go in the museum, though they can come back in the communities, though they can go in schools. That they were taken from. Yes, though, yes, though they can go in universities. Mm. So the ecologies, the place where you can host the object are numerous in Africa. Right. Dr. Saar, we have the, the former AU ambassador to the mm -hmm. US, Dr. Arikana Chiumborikao, and she's been trending on social media. We see clips of her mm -hmm. talking about how former colonial powers, France in particular, continue to pillage Africa, to use mm -hmm. her words. Is that a fair representation of how things are at present? I think it's just, I think it's just because uh, all the transnational companies that there are in, in our countries, you know, France, China, et cetera, et cetera, Great Britain, they have a lot of asymmetric power relation with our states. Most of the states are, are weak states. And when they negotiate the contract on oil, on gas, on mining, the main part came, you know, to the to the European companies, and you know, and the smallest part came to the Africans. And, and, and it's a it's a question that is very complex because this question is rooted with the how these regimes were elected. Are they here for the, for the interest of the main African or for their just for their group, are they legitimate or not? And it's kind of, you know, it's kind of very difficult equations because, you know, it, you, you must produce from African societies a good, le a good leadership that, that is very strong to be able to negotiate in his own interest and to fight again this power asymmetric relation and they must be supported by the, a strong civil society. But to have a strong civil society, you have to nurture it you have to educate educate people to have a free space. Right. You know, it's a, it, it's a kind of, you know. That brings me to my next question. Do you think that former colonial powers still feel that they are superior to Africans? I think that there is an imaginary of superiority, of cultural superiority, that is in the society that is taught, in how history is taught, is how they represent themselves, is how they represent the other, their culture, their, their knowledge, their civilization, and there is a work to do there to show that, you know, it's, it, it's kind of, it's, it's about the narrative of the reality of the contribution of each civilization to the global and the human civilizations. And these imaginaries of an imperial imaginaries that is long lasting, that is now, you know, in, not in all people, but, you know, in, you know, in the space is also a, a problem.